Up close tonight, a singer who has been playing to sold-out houses packed with passionately loyal followers for more than a decade, but many of you don't know her name or her music. That's because she has rejected every approach by the mass marketers. Her own label is Righteous Babe. Her look and sound have changed many times, but they always say, I'm different. Up close, Ani DeFranco. When I was four years old, <laughs> They tried to test my IQ. They showed me this picture of three oranges and a pear. They asked me which one is different and does not belong. They taught me different is wrong. But when I was 13 years old, I woke up one morning, thighs covered in blood like a war, like a warning that I live in a breakable, takeable body, an ever-increasingly valuable body that a woman had come in the night to replace me, deface me. And to help us understand Ani DeFranco, my Nightline colleague, Deborah Amos. Chris, you're going to hear the rest of that poem at the end of this broadcast because, as a songwriter, Ani DeFranco is a poet. But first and foremost, she's a folk singer who pumps the politics of everyday life into her lyrics. But she's nothing like that older generation, Pete Seeger or even Dylan. Sure, she's about angry politics, as was early Dylan, but DeFranco's issues are broader than anything from the 1960s. Feminism, capitalism, the personal politics of relationships, the world after 9-11. After a decade of concerts, she's mellowed a little, but just a little. Hey. Hi. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, the old lady's got crutches. It's true. I broke a little bone in my foot. That's the bad news. But, um, yeah, but, uh, but the good news is uh, uh, you're here. <laughs> Just letting it vanquish. Yes, back, back, back in the dark of your mind where the eyes of your demons are gleaming. Are you mad, mad, mad about the life you never had? Yes, even when you are dreaming of my When I first began playing uh, coffee houses, folk venues, you know, the acoustic music circuits, so you'd have, you know, folk music patrons, you know. Uh, a lot of middle-aged people, men, women, come out and go, whoa, oh, who is this shaved-headed, you know, jack-booted uh, girl at the, at the, you know, in this folk festival or, you know. And, uh, but then as I began to get out, then I hooked up with my tribe. So then the audience shifted pretty quickly to young women. And Your tribe? My tribe. Other young women discovering their own anger for the first time in their lives after spending, you know, their whole childhood and adolescence, uh, you know, trying to revive the burnt frogs that the boys were done with. You know, I began writing songs and, you know, that, that, uh, that young feminist, you know, angry girl stereotype that I was getting from the dominant culture. I did not feel at folk festivals. I would go encounter stodgy old men like Pete Seeger, Utah Phillips, Tom Paxton, radical, vibrant, loving, welcoming. And when I showed up at the folk festival, those men were not threatened. They did not describe me as an angry. They recognized, oh, she's one of us. She's one of us. Welcome, and thanks for bringing the teenagers. Maybe this folk festival will continue. like a lot of musicians on stage do you have you always built that is that something that you thought about you wanted it that way or did it happen and then you knew that you you needed it it happened and then I realized wow here's a beautiful element to being an independent musician those 10 years of 
struggle uh, without a single radio hit, you know, means that, you know, I've, I've showed up to pop concerts and, you know, talking, 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 and then the hit song and everybody comes to life and sings along. And at my show, bless their hearts, there's listening and listening and listening and singing along with all the songs or, or not. It's not about any one song. It's not about, it's about 10 years of a relationship that I've built with my audience. Then is that relationship with your audience a traditional folk singer's relationship with the audience? Exactly. But it's not folk music so much. You do hip hop, you do jazz, you do every conceivable but that's folk music. Those are, you know, those are music. I mean, hip hop didn't start with, uh, on a major label, you know. It started being the voice of its own community, you know. Hip hop is a folk music in its inception. Yeah, but I, I just mean, when I you think, think of folk have, music, you think of, you know, yeah, the guitar I don't, player. Yeah, I don't think, I mean, folk music is not strumming a guitar and singing about nature and children. It's not even the acoustic guitar. I, I see it much more as. You know, folk music is, it's sub-corporate, it's community-based music, it's, it's, it's politically uh, aware um, music. The sound of it, you know, don't be deceived. <laughs> it's subversive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Folk music is, is subversive and, um, and, and, and affirming uh, a culture, you know, whatever, whatever form it, it is in, you know, who, what, whoever the folks are, it's affirming a culture beyond the, the mainstream. The independent thing with me is really, it's in my blood, like I cannot be told what to do. Up Close, brought to you by Zantac 75.